Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the best stocks to buy, as well as the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know about. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Stocks have soared recently, where the NASDAQ, the SP500, and the Dow Jones are all climbing higher. This is because companies have overperformed and met or exceeded investor expectations, which has reflected very positively on their respected share prices. We also saw Reddit, ticker symbol RDDT, jumping to $50.31 after surging by over 47% in their respected share price. And the main reason for this is because the company recently had an IPO which was very successful. However, please be cognizant that this company will pull back in their share price momentarily, so don't get too excited and please prepare for that pullback. Next up, I want to give you an update regarding our Apple story. And if you didn't know, Apple is a gigantic technology company. And recently, the Justice Department joined 15 states and Washington, D.C. in suing this tech giant. Essentially, the Department of Justice accused Apple of suppressing cloud streaming apps for video games. And they have also accused Apple of saying that the company's policies have prevented competition and competitors in their own app store, or from creating their own super apps. On top of that, the DOJ's lawsuit also alleges that Apple has purposefully made it harder for iPhone owners and users to buy and use products outside of the Apple ecosystem. And then last but not least, the DOJ also claimed that third-party developers cannot create digital wallets for the iPhone since Apple has already created their own digital wallet software. So essentially, Apple is suppressing competition, which is against antitrust laws. Surprisingly, I really don't think this is going to impact Apple very negatively, considering that this company has so much cash on their balance sheet that even if they were to lose the lawsuit, they could easily pay any fines or damages. However, I do agree with the Justice Department considering that Apple should change their ways, but overall, I do not think this is going to negatively impact Apple's share price. In essence, this does not negatively impact my investment thesis into Apple, which is why I still hold the company in my portfolio, but I'd love to hear your thoughts about that company down below. Next up, we're going to talk about NVIDIA, which we will also mention later in the video. So we have multiple stories surrounding this company, but first, let's start off with why NVIDIA is powering artificial intelligence nurses. NVIDIA is a dominant chip maker, and they announced this week that it has partnered with a healthcare startup named Hippocratic AI. Hippocratic AI, with NVIDIA's backing, can actually produce quote-unquote nurses, which are completely generated by artificial intelligence. These nurses, which apparently only cost $9 per hour can replace humans in various areas, including patient care. These AIs can perform non-diagnostic and patient-facing work which would include things like post-operation check-ins, nutritional guidance, and pharmacy calls. And as you can see on screen, this is literally someone using this exact platform from Hippocratic AI. Hippocratic AI is trying to solve two problems. The first problem is that there is a huge shortage of nurses, and the second problem is that they want healthcare providers to not only have nurses, but also save some money. And since these AI nurses only cost around $9 per hour, it's clearly cheaper than hiring an actual nurse. So therefore, they want to solve both of these problems in the healthcare system right now. I actually think that this could be a very good idea, not only for healthcare providers, but also for NVIDIA and Hippocratic AI. But there is one big problem here. It seems we are losing touch with that human element that AI just cannot give us as of right now. So it is nice to actually see a person or talk to a person about your systems or any post-care follow-up after an operation. But I would love to hear your thoughts about this story down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about Walmart, which is is a company I personally hold in my portfolio, and they are adding high-end products to more than 800 of their stores. In a nutshell, Walmart wants to attract wealthier shoppers. However, I think this might backfire not on Walmart, but rather the shoppers themselves, and here's what I mean. I do think this will positively impact Walmart's top and bottom line, which is great news for this company or any investors who currently hold WMT stock. However, the shoppers are something different. Instead of attracting wealthier shoppers, you're going to have regular shoppers try to spend more and overspend their money on these types of products so they can quote-unquote look rich. And I see 
this happening all the time in our society. But overall, I do think this is a very good move from Walmart. Next up, let's talk more about Boeing, because recently, airline CEOs have reportedly requested an audience with Boeing's board of directors, and this is not going to be a comfortable meeting for Boeing. Considering Boeing's list of problems that have come out over the last month, Boeing as a company and their share price is being bombarded with a lot of criticism. Therefore, this is going to act as a negative catalyst for this company and their overall share price. But I personally am still buying into BA stock, which is Boeing's ticker symbol. But remember, before you make any investment decision, always make sure to do your own research. Next up in our quick news stories before the best stocks to buy, let's talk about DoorDash. DoorDash operates a platform where you can order meals and have it delivered straight to your home or wherever you're at. And this company announced that they are rolling out fast food deliveries through air drones in the United States. So I'm very interested to see if this is going to work out for the company, because in my opinion, these drones could either get damaged or even stolen, so I wonder how much these drones actually cost. At the end of the day, this is still innovative, so I like to see how this company is adapting and trying out new things, so I would say this is good news for this company. Next up, let's talk about Signet Jewelers, which is a company you might not be familiar with, and their ticker symbol is SIG. Signet Jewelers is the self-proclaimed world's largest diamond jewelry seller, and they have a plethora of brands underneath their umbrella, which would include K, Jared, Zales, and Blue Nile, just to name a few. However, this company recently had a negative catalyst, because they gave investors a not-so-shiny forecast for the remainder of this year, and that's why their share price could plummet. People seem to be getting married later in life, and they are not wasting their money on actual diamonds, meaning that these mined jewels are not actually selling very well, and instead, people are gravitating toward the cheaper option, which would be lab-grown diamonds. Lab-grown diamonds are normally a lot cheaper than mined gems, so overall, this is taking a big bite out of sales for a plethora of various jewelry stores. But if you are the type of investor who likes to invest into gold and silver or even diamonds and gems, feel free to look into Signet Jewelers, because why not invest into a business which deals in those things? But now let's move on to talk about digital gold, which is none other than Bitcoin. Kathy Wood recently called Bitcoin a, quote, financial superhighway, and she reiterated her $1.5 million price target for BTC. The CEO of ARK Invest, which is none other than Kathy Wood, said that Bitcoin is a financial superhighway, and she has a lot of faith in this particular asset going forward. If you weren't already aware, ARK Invest, also known as ARK Investment Management, recently became one of the main issuers of a spot Bitcoin ETF known as ARKB. This exchange-traded fund has made Bitcoin more accessible to traditional investors, and that's why the overall price of Bitcoin is surging higher and higher. What's even more interesting is that ARK Invest's Spot Bitcoin ETF is one of the more successful Spot Bitcoin ETFs on the market right now. Kathy Wood of ARK Invest even says, and I quote, Bitcoin has miles to go, end quote, and she is referring to their price target because she believes that Bitcoin could literally surge up to 1.5 million. However, it gets even better because Kathy Wood went on to say that mathematically speaking, Bitcoin's price could easily rise above 3.5 million dollars. However, I want to pull this back to reality real quick. First, I want to make it known that I personally hold a Bitcoin in my portfolio. However, I do not agree with Kathy Wood here, and here's why. I think Kathy Wood giving these astronomical price targets for Bitcoin are a part of an agenda, and here's what I mean. Not only does Kathy Wood personally own Bitcoin, but she also operates one of the most successful spot Bitcoin ETFs. And what's one of the best ways to get people to invest into your ETF? Well, you would talk about how great the assets are within your ETF, and since she operates a spot Bitcoin ETF, she wants to give these magnificent price targets for Bitcoin, which will encourage people to buy her ETFs. And remember, she is making money off of these ETFs because they charge a fee. Therefore, it's in Kathy Wood's best interest to continuously hype up Bitcoin, even if the price targets that she is saying are astronomical and honestly unrealistic over the next few years. Now, this article doesn't give an actual timeline on when she believes that Bitcoin will hit these prices, but overall, I do think that we need to slow down in regards to our price targets in regards to this asset, but I would love to hear your thoughts down below about this, and I would also like to know if you personally hold Bitcoin in your portfolio. But now let's return to NVIDIA, because they have made several big announcements recently. As you probably know, they had their GTC event, where they unveiled their new Blackwell GPU. However, the news gets even better. Recently, a UBS analyst 
commented that they believe that Nvidia is on the brink of, quote, an entirely new wave of demand. The UBS analyst then goes on to state how Nvidia could generate $150 billion in revenue in 2025, and this would be due to various countries such as the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, Sweden, Japan, Korea, and Malaysia. He says that the demand that Nvidia could experience from these countries will be astronomical, which is why he increased his price target on Nvidia's shares from $800 up to $1,100 per share. So this is great news for NVDA shareholders. But that's not all, because Nvidia is also in talks to raise equity capital for CoreWeave. This company is a specialized cloud provider who could literally reach a $16 billion value. So this is great news for this company as well as Nvidia. For context, Nvidia backed CoreWeave previously back in December of 2023 to where the company valued themselves at around $7 billion. And the initial round of investments for this company attracted some big fish, including Fidelity Management and Research Company, as well as JP Morgan Asset Management. Therefore, it seems that Nvidia is making investments into other companies, which will ultimately help them as a company in the future. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about this down below. And don't forget that CoreWeave could potentially go public on the stock market, so please be aware of that as well. Luckily, I'm going to keep you informed and up to date on whether or not if or when CoreWeave will ever go public on the stock market, so stay tuned for that. Next up, let's talk about a special purpose acquisition company also known as a SPAC, which is going to make Donald Trump even more rich, and here's what I mean. We have reported multiple times on a company known as Digital World Acquisition Corp, which is a SPAC company. Essentially, this special purpose acquisition company is used as a shell company to take a private company public. This means that Donald Trump's Truth social media platform does not have to go public traditionally through an IPO and instead just has to be acquired or acquire digital world acquisition and then it can instantly be listed on the public stock market. If this gets officially finalized, Donald Trump could literally score up to $3 billion worth of paper gains, which is a hefty payday. As of right now, the digital world acquisition SPAC is not necessarily just taking the Truth social media platform public, but rather Trump's entire company named Trump Media and Technology Group. That is the firm which actually runs the social media site named Truth Social, which is a competitor to X, formerly known as Twitter. From now on, I'm going to refer to Trump Media and Technology Group as TMTG, which generated revenues of around $3.4 million in the first three quarters of 2023. However, as of right now, the fundamentals of this company are not very positive, considering that TMTG has posted a net loss of $49 million during that same time period. This means that the company is losing way more money than they are making, which is a huge problem. But believe me, it gets even worse. If or when this is officially finalized, the ticker symbol of this new entity will be trading under DJT on the NASDAQ. But that's not the bad news. Here is the bad news in my opinion. Once this company goes public, the company's market value will be around $5.7 billion, which is a huge problem because the company is only generating revenues of $3.4 million. On top of that, Trump will be allowed to sell his shares six months after this acquisition goes through. Therefore, if he wants a huge payday, he could single-handedly cause this stock to plummet dramatically. So whether or not you like him or not, it doesn't matter. Let's talk about making money. If you think the company is going to go downwards in their share price by Trump selling, then you would want to short this company and that's how you can make money. On the other hand, if you don't think this is just a pump and dump scheme, then feel free to invest into this company and see where it goes. As for me, I'm going to stay out of this company completely completely because I don't know where it's going and I honestly don't feel like gambling on this company at all. I think there are a lot of other better companies on the stock market that I would rather invest into, but I would love to hear your thoughts about this down below in the comments. Next up, let's talk about a follow-on story for B. Riley Financial, which recently dropped in their share price by 6.66%. B. Riley Financial, ticker symbol R-I-L-Y, ticker name Riley, recently missed and is now delinquent on one of their filings. Recently, the company received an expected delinquency notification letter from NASDAQ for delayed filing of the company's annual report on Form 10-K. This is why investors are freaking out because there's no real reason why they needed to miss this unless something shady is going on with the company. However, as of right now, this notification has no immediate effects. However, investors are sure getting nervous and that's why I personally do not hold this company in my portfolio. Next up, let's talk about Google, which is one of my all-time favorite companies because I personally hold GOOG and GOOGL stock in my portfolio. The reason why Google was in the news is because some investors believe that artificial intelligence will start eating away
away at Google's competitive advantage. However, I beg to differ, and I actually think that Google is so insulated that this honestly will not impact them virtually at all, and here's why. First, I do want to recognize that there are a few analysts who have updated their price targets for Google, and this has scared investors for the most part. But let me tell you why they are overreacting. I'm sure that most of you know that generative AI and artificial intelligence apps have either helped you in your day-to-day -day life, or at least it has helped you in some way or another, directly or indirectly. And some investors believe that this will negatively impact the search market, but let me tell you what this article has to say, and I quote, these solutions will likely affect the search market, but might not derail Google's dominance. For example, despite ChatGPT and Microsoft's AI solutions, including Bing and Copilot, Google appears to have insulated itself from these challengers via its solution, Gemini, which was formerly known as Bard. And so far, we've only seen Alphabet and Google increase in regards to their top and bottom line growth and not decrease. So if these investors and analysts were right, we actually should see a decline in this company's top and bottom line, but we're seeing the opposite. So honestly, Google is using this to their own advantage. Therefore, I still personally hold Google in my portfolio, and it has been one of my longest held investments. So I would recommend that you look further into this company to do the same. Now, of course, anything can happen, but a Wedbush Securities analyst would agree with me, saying to not worry about artificial intelligence in regards to Google's current dominance. Lastly, let's talk about the week ahead, starting off with Monday, March 25th. This is expected to be the day when Digital World Acquisition, ticker symbol DWAC, is anticipated to take Trump Media and Technology Group public. Therefore, mark your calendars for Monday whether or not you want to invest or short this company, because trust me, it's going to be a volatile one. Next up on March 26th, we see companies such as McCormick and GameStop who will release their earnings. For me personally, I do not own either of these stocks, but I'd love to hear if you hold either of these stocks down below in the comments. Next, let's move on to Wednesday, March 26th. Seventh. This is when Moderna, ticker symbol MRNA, will host its fifth annual investor event. For me personally, I do not hold Moderna or Pfizer in my personal portfolio, but I did hold them for a short amount of time because I traded off of their volatility and I made a lot of profit from it. So I did love them for that time, but as of right now, I do not hold either of them. But we do have a pretty big catalyst happening for Rivian on Wednesday. Rivian Automotive, ticker symbol RIVN, will host a special event to promote their new R2 model, which should act as a positive catalyst for their share price. But now let's move on to Thursday, March 28th. There are a few notable companies which will report earnings on that date, however, I think the best one would be Walgreens Boots Alliance, ticker symbol WBA, and that would be more for dividend stock investors and not growth stock investors such as myself. And then lastly, on Friday, March 29th, the US stock market exchanges will be closed for the observance of Good Friday. So I'd love to hear your thoughts about any or all of these stories down below. Go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, and I'll see you in the next YT video.